Good morning, and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. This morning, uh, we will be celebrating our music with the Joyful Noise Choir, and we will have a guest speaker, who is Reverend James Trapp, who is at present the minister at the Dynamic Unity Spiritual Life Center in Sacramento. So I invite you to take a deep breath, let everything go, come into the moment, and join us for our service this morning. Jr. Our songs reflect a message of the civil rights era and recognize a new movement dawning in the world today. Our brightly colored scarves represent the diversity of all our brothers and sisters in the world. Happy birthday, Dr. King. Your dream has become our dream and your dream lives on. Please join us and remain seated as we sing after, I'm sorry, unite with me. Thank you. Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You look pretty wonderful this morning. <laughs> We're pleased to welcome this morning the Joyful Noise Choir, directed by, by Sheila Gatro, and of course our band Fusion. Thank you for being here. My name is Susan Galvin. I'm a past assistant minister here at Unity of Walnut Creek. Would you join me right now in welcoming and greeting our friends at home? Thank you for being a part of our service. We feel your presence and we appreciate your sharing your heart, your time, your interest with us. If you are new to our services this morning, we want to give you a very special welcome. We're glad that you have chosen to be here with us today. Here at Unity, we are all on the journey through life together. And for us, that is a spiritual journey, a conscious and intentional spiritual journey. At Unity, we offer teachings from all the world religions. So you may hear some of that here today. We know that there are many truths and many different paths, and we each have our own. But I know for me, there's something about when we gather together, like we are doing right now, there's some kind of a special spiritual something that we each receive, like a vitamin for the heart. And so I thank you for bringing yourself here to share that with us today. Let's open our service with the power of affirmative prayer as we attune to that divine presence that lives in all of us. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life the all-loving goodness of God. Now breathe into your heart, letting go of all your distractions. And settling in, let's say it again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And now please remain seated and join us in singing, See the Beauty in You.
This morning, I'd like you to join me in welcoming a very special guest. Uh, today, the Reverend James Trapp is with us. He's minister at the Dynamic Unity Spiritual Life Center in Sacramento. He has served as president and CEO of Unity Worldwide Ministries. Prior to that, he was senior minister in Unity of Miami, which is a very large and thriving ministry in the Miami area. All the time, James has been a true inspiration to all of Unity, including to Reverend David and Sheila, who are both so very pleased to have him here today. Please join me in welcoming <coughs> Reverend James Trapp. you to be totally present in the nowness of this moment. For in this moment all the presence and power and love of pure spirit is. There are many names for this presence that we call God. We may call it the Atman presence. Some refer to this energy and force as the buddhic field. Closer than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. Yet regardless of what we call it, our task is to call it forth as the activity of our awareness. God is love. God is peace. God is everything that is good and perfect. And all the qualities that this presence that we name God are within us. So we are reminded that we are peace and love, and joy, and wisdom, and all that is good and perfect. This is our true nature and being. And regardless of what we may have done or not done in the past, regardless of what names others may have called us, the only name that we answer to is one that includes us as being children of God, children of the Most High, expressions of this presence. We feel this presence deep within us now. So that everything that we think comes from the consciousness of pure being. Every word that we speak comes from the consciousness of the Christ's presence. All that we do, every action that we take, is in alignment with the love of this grand and beautiful universe. 
feel that within the depths of your being right now. And indeed say and know that the presence of God and I and all of us are one. There is no separation, no otherness, no other power other than the power of the love of God. So we can say, as the Master said, when you see me, you see the presence that sent me. So let's take a moment of that quietness, go into that secret place of the Most High, and touch the realm of the all-knowing, everywhere present presence of love itself by going to a silent moment for just a tad bit of time. Spirit of God is upon us. And we have been anointed to go forth and spread the good news that we are here to perfect our loving in our world. For this and so much more, we are grateful and thankful. So it is, and so we let it be. Amen.
Beginning on Saturday, we have the Heart Math Resilience Advantage with Carolyn Jansen. Carolyn is one of Unity's licensed heart math coaches and trainers. She brings a wealth of experience as a resilience coach, classroom teacher, parent educator, and facilitator. And then on Sunday, we are launching the powerful focus of this year, which is Year of Forgiveness. Joining us, we will have the founder of the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance with inspiring stories of forgiveness. And then in the afternoon, there will be a panel who will be sharing different understandings of the forgiveness experience. So please be sure to join in on these two special <laughs> happenings. Our spiritual classes have <laughs> begun and drop-ins are always welcome. We have a great selection of wonderful classes. And it's crab feed time again. Yeah. It's the last Saturday in February, and this is a great event, and our Unity family always has such a wonderful time. Tickets will go on sale today on the patio and then in the book center during the week. And I'd also like to let people know that the connection class at 2 p.m. today has been canceled, so just to let everyone know. And until you hear the gong, please enjoy taking a quick moment to greet the people immediately around you.
Thank you, choir. <laughs> yes, let's give them a hand once again. Yes. They're reminding us of the possibilities of the human spirit in song. So they've already really said the sermon. <laughs> At least they sing in its song. But I'm going to share a few words with you and also just to give acknowledgement to uh, Reverend David MacArthur. I, as uh, was pointed out in the introduction, when I was the CEO of Uni Worldwide Ministry, he was on our board of trustees, and I know he had a lot of support from this community to be in that position. And he was such a magnificent consciousness to have, and you're blessed to have him as a spiritual leader here at the Unity of Walnut Creek. I miss him quite a bit. <laughs> you know, as they were singing that song, I was thinking about someone who had come up to me a while back and was saying, well, James, there's so many things happening in the world. You know, we got recently the, the shootings in, in Paris uh, that took place and all those innocent people that died and, you know, the protests and the civil unrest that took place as a result of Ferguson uh, over the past year and, you know, the three police officers that were killed in New York City recently. And so they're coming to me, you know, because I'm, you know, the answer man to them. And he said, James, what does it all mean? And, you know, the inside of my mind was saying, you know, like Scooby-Doo, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I mean I, it's a big question. But, of course, upon further reflection, you know, we realize that these headlines and these experiences that take place as someone told me, are really the world's prayer requests. They're telling us, what is it that we need to pray for? And it serves as a reminder that anytime events like this take place, they, they serve as evolutionary triggers to help us move from where we are to where we can as spiritual beings. And this time, as they were singing that song for peace and harmony, for us to really bring this into the forefront of our awareness, to make this the activity of our life and in our world. And I would say that these spiritual ideas are here to be brought now. In other words, the time is now. You know, there's a statement from a French dramatist and novelist and poet by the name of Victor Hugo. And he said that all the armies in the world can be resisted, but not an idea whose time has come. He's saying there's nothing more powerful in our world, nothing more than an idea whose time has come when it's ready. And sometimes there's a, a divine unfoldment just that moment in history that creates that special moment where the perfect person that has a vision and a mission brings it forth because it's an idea that alters history. And I would say that such a moment took place on December 1st, 1955, when a 42-year-old African-American seamstress was riding a public bus from her job at the Montgomery, Alabama department store. And she was approached by a man who remained standing rather than sit next to her. And the bus driver demanded that she surrender her seat because this was required by the segregation laws during that time in the state of Alabama. And of course, the woman said later on that she was not a martyr in any way, shape, or form, but, but she was having a very hard day and her feet was hurting. So she wasn't going to give up her seat that day. <laughs> so she was subsequently arrested. And soon after, a visionary minister led a 381-day boycott, a nonviolent boycott against the bus system in Alabama during that time. And that set in motion a moral and spiritual as well as a political revolution. And those tremors are really felt around the world today. And of course, we know that woman was Rosa Parks, and that minister was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday is being recognized this weekend in this country as well as other parts of our world. 
Dr. King, of course, no doubt had a vision that went beyond himself. And that vision positively impacted and redirected the future of America. He had a specific mission that he knew that he was to carry out. And he did not miss his mission. And I believe in the same way we are not here to miss our mission for what is here to be done today in our world. I would say that we all have our own unique missions. We all have a grand mission in our life. It may be considered large or small, but in the eyes of spirit, there's no large or small. It's all contributing to creating that peace and harmony in our world. But I think for us, it has to be big in order to be called a mission for us. And I believe when we begin to wrap ourselves our own, a dynamic theme for our life, a dynamic mission for our own lives, we discover a couple of things. We discover that sometimes those seeming nagging problems that sometimes we go begging to God to get rid of, you know, we may be going to a chaplain or a prayer partner or call silent unity, and we may be saying, please, please, please. Oh, no, wait a minute, that's James Brown, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but if we're going to, to prayer and saying, I just want to get rid of this. My God, if only this would happen for me. If only everything would be taken care of. If this would happen, then my life would be all right and I can truly give it. But of course, we have it backwards. You see, if we begin to embrace a large mission for our own life, surrender to it, walk in it, feel the gratitude of having that pump in our experience, we'll discover those seeming little problems begin to disappear because those problems are simply a message to our life that we're trying to live in a world too small. And we're here to expand our world, expand our perception, expand our possibilities, and it will begin to dissolve into the nothingness in which they have come. I think Dr. King had this kind of compelling vision. You know, his vision talked about the beloved community. And as we celebrate his legacy, we want to look at that vision of which we can become a vehicle for its expression. And we can participate in its continuous unfoldment that's so needed in our world today. You know, there's a statement from the Gospel of John that says in part, beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And so out of that scriptural reference came the phrase, the beloved community. It was coined by a Methodist minister by the name of James Lawson and adopted by Dr. King. The Apostle Paul called it the colony of heaven. It's a place where all men and women operate on the planet as if they were all brothers and sisters because they are as if the boundaries that seem to separate us are false because they are. You know, this beloved community that Dr. King spoke about, this beloved community that Reverend Lawson spoke about, that Mahatma Gandhi spoke about, that Jesus the Christ spoke about, that the Buddha saw in his vision, that all the mystics and spiritual leaders that have, have come through the ages is very real. It's not a figment of our imagination. And anyone who's been on this path long enough has done a little bit of fellowship, a little bit of prayer work, a little bit of insight, and a little bit of contemplation, ultimately come to realize that this beloved community is an idea in the mind of the eternal God presence. And we must hold it in our own hearts. And I think we do this by recognizing that the template for this idea is already in existence. Sometimes if we look at some of the challenges that take place in the world, as I was sharing, that this person brought to my attention and we all are aware about, it may not appear that way. But Emily Cady, who wrote the book Lessons in Truth, in her chapter on unity and spirit, said that if we, do not, if we did not know it as a living reality, that behind all the multitude and variety of human experiences, the wars and rumors of war, the sense of separation that we sometimes have. She says that behind all of that, 
there's a mastermind that sees the end from the beginning. And if we do not know it, we may become discouraged as we look at those events. But there is a blueprint, there is a plan, and it's waiting to catch our attention. I think America and our world is looking for a compelling vision. Maybe that the last vision that we had on that level was Dr. Luther King's vision who looked out and said, I have a dream that we want to continue in some way. And he began to speak about this dream, the possibility of all of us living together and working together, being creative together as one spiritual family. We want to reach out and expand it. You know, the astronauts, when they have gone out, then many of them had a spiritual epiphany. When they were coming back from space, they saw there were no longer any lines that we have drawn on the maps because that's something human beings have created. So while we asked the question, what is it that we can do to further this beloved community that Dr. King championed and articulated so well? Well, we go back to that statement that says that, beloved, since God loved us so much, we must also love one another. And no one who has ever seen God, if we can love one another, God lives in us. And his love is perfected in us. Now, I was to say that's, that's simple enough, but not necessarily easy. Because it begins by realizing it's impossible to love humanity in general. We can only love humanity in particular. Sometimes, uh, too often, you know, we espouse the love ethic. We say, oh, I love humanity. But when it comes to loving our neighbor, loving that person next to us in the cubicle, <laughs> loving us, loving that person who is in the eight items or less line with 25 items in their <laughs> shopping cart, <laughs> loving someone maybe with a different background, sometimes it becomes a little more difficult. But to build a love ethic is no longer sufficient to say to love in general. But we're exercising a spiritual intention to love in particular. Jesus said, you know, in these times we have to gird our loins, so to speak, that we must love that person right in front of us, regardless of who they are. And we go in deep into that practice. You know, we sometimes rebel against the culture that society has imposed upon us. And in those moments, we must let our imagination be like an angel of God and see something greater. And we begin to imagine what it would be like to be another person. Be another person that we may be having difficulty with. Because, as I like to say, it's easy to be critical. Because some people criticize others as if there's some sort of prize in it. You probably don't know people like that, but <laughs> I've run across a few. But oftentimes we walk in life, we want others to understand us. We want them to understand our point of view, see things our way. And sometimes we may become fixed and rigid in our opinion. And we articulate our point of view, imagine all kinds of ways we can get our point across. Or we bring into expression the thing that we want. And we do it any means necessary for us to have that. But in order to engender the love ethic that Dr. King talked about and Jesus really built his ministry on, we must use our imagination and set, put ourselves in another person's shoes and put ourselves in another person's point of view and see them from another perspective. And this will widen our perspective and allows us to embrace that other person and activates the love ethic and makes it real and not theoretical but it takes our spiritual intention. It takes an intention to break down those barriers, to break down our defense mechanisms, and to see things from another point of view. But when we do that, our perception is enlarged and we come into practice and teach that true love. Of course, what we want to do is move from mere toleration of others. That may be a start. But we don't want to stop there. You know, sometimes people say, you know, I could tolerate them for a while. If 
five minutes and I got to go. <laughs> but we want to move beyond that. We want to move from toleration to appreciation and acceptance and embracing to go beyond our own limited barriers of another. You know, Jesus often said that, you know, he had the statement, we must turn the other cheek. And people will say, well, you know, I'm not ready for that. That's a little bit too extreme. You know, I like that other stuff that you were saying, you know, that God is love and you're the light of the world. The kingdom of God is within you. I'm not a masochist, so I'm not turning the other cheek. But of course, he didn't mean that. He meant that whenever someone gives us one form of energy, we do not give the same energy back if there's a lesser energy. So when he talked about turning the other cheek, it means that we give that person another form of energy. Someone gives us hate, we give them love. Not turn the other cheek like slap me. No, please. <laughs> but turning like Aikido in the, the martial arts and turning and letting the energy go by and giving another energy in return. Giving forgiveness, giving love, giving compassion, giving understanding. And of course, it takes strength to do that. You know, it doesn't take strength to return that same kind of energy backwards. You know, one there's an incident in which Dr. Martin Luther King was coming out of a, a rally or a speech, and he was walking, and someone who did not like him walked up to him and spit in his face. And he said that what he did is he reached into his pocket and pulled out his handkerchief. He wiped the spittle off his face and balled it up in, in the handkerchief, and he handed it to the man and said, I, I think this belongs to you. <laughs> of course, for someone to do something like that only comes with an understanding of who we are as spiritual beings. We have to use what Dr. King called the soul force. And he said it takes strength to operate that soul force in our awareness. You know, we want to really have our true self come forth, where we end up loving regardless of what's happening in spite of the little self. We end up forgiving in spite of the little self. We end up sharing in spite of the little self, and then we realize this is our true self. This is who we really are. You know, there was a woman on a plane, and she got up to go use the restroom, and she had left her cookies in the chair. And she came back, and she saw that a man that was sitting next to her in the seat had started just without permission, went over there, grabbed her bag of cookies, started eating her cookies. So she was really indignant about this. She looked at him, you know, and he pulled out a cookie, gave her one. <laughs> he ate another. And then after a while, she realized after all this time, she was having all this negative energy going to her, to this man sitting next to her. She realized, oh, I'm in the wrong seat. <laughs> And so she said to the man, here, here, I, here you are, you know, I'm reaching in the bag, grabbing the cookies, eating cookies while you're eating the cookies out the bag, and you didn't say anything. And he said, you know, I always live by this motto, when in doubt, share. <laughs> so I was just sharing my cookies with you. But the bottom line is, we ask ourselves, what's our true theology in life? And our true theology is what we do. What do we practice? Practice is the key. You know, regardless of our philosophy, our theological philosophy, our real theology, our real religion is what we do. That is an empowering theology. So what do we do when we're faced with revenge in our time? What do we do when we're faced with hate? What do we do when we're faced with the need to forgive? If we have a lofty belief that God is good and is going to forgive one day and we're going to forgive one day. We're just putting it off in the future. 
That's not empowerment. That's just simply a delay tactic of our ego. So we want to go with the prevailing thought of the day, not necessarily what's going to thought of the day, but really we want to be those revolutionaries, those saying that we want to bring a different energy to transform the world. Sometimes we don't think that what we do, where we are, makes a difference. But if we go into our little room, our corner room, if we're praying and holding a new vision of possibilities, we're bringing a whole new energy into the world because we're interconnected on that spiritual level, that soul level. And whatever happens in one place is affecting every place on this planet. And so when we practice these principles, we begin to break down any artificial barriers that we've created between people, between groups, between nations. To download the beloved community that Dr. Dream, Dr. King dreamed about, we begin to look at each other and we will see that beauty. We'll stop seeing differences. We'll simply walk around and sometimes as I just look at people walking around, I say, look at that other magnificent being that God has created. How does God keep doing this? There's so many of them. See, we'll not see color, we'll see different shades of the infinite. We'll not see separate cultures or religions. We'll see these as many variations of the infinite spirit that needs all of these cultures, all of these religions, all of these ways of being to reveal its infinitude. And we'll see that we're all glorifying God as the beloved community. So we want to do our part to expand the beloved community by simply taking one area of our life where we can intensely practice this love ethic. One area we can rebel against business as usual. One area of life where forgiveness can become the order of our day. So our seemingly upside down world can become right side up. We do this in our own environment. And then we will be able to watch it spread like wildfire. Because we're in tune with the way things really are spiritually that underneath business as usual, there is an idea. There is a spiritual plan. There is wholeness. There is harmony. So friends and brothers and sisters of God, the time is now. The place is wherever you are to be more than you ever thought you could be. The world needs us to be channels for the full expressions of the Spirit so that we may anchor the beloved community on earth that Dr. King envisioned, and as it is in the mind and the heart of the spirit of the living God, because this is an idea whose time has come. Peace and blessings to you.
After the service today to offer prayer support for challenges or celebrations and you may see them in the sanctuary out on the patio on the grounds and they are the ones wearing the lavender stoles and at any time you can select a prayer request from our website I ask everyone to please take a connection card from the seat pockets <coughs> in front of you and we invite each of you to take a moment to fill out this card if you have a prayer request, a question, or a comment. And if you're new to Unity, uh, please feel free to go to the welcome table on the patio after the service and we'd enjoy getting to know you better. Thank you for checking the box if you're joining us in our weekly spiritual focus. And our spiritual focus this week is we are one in spirit. The ushers will receive your card with the offering toward the end of the music. It's now time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the seat pockets in front of you. And for those of you watching at home, you can click on the donate button on our Watch Live page. 
Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance expressing in our lives. Be thankful for every blessing that you gain and grateful for every demonstration as if it were an unexpected treasure dropped in your lap. This will keep your heart fresh, for true thanksgiving may be likened to rain falling upon ready soil, refreshing it and increasing its productive productiveness. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hands and be aware that God is the source of all your good. Please repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. You are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines through you.
Let's stand up, join hands. Let's do our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And now let's sing our peace song. and the light and the peace on earth right now. So let your light shine and have fun. <laughs>